Hi again everyone. In this video we're going to discuss double integrals and how to reverse the order of integration. Now let's put that in a bit of context. You can see here in this example there's a definite order of integration. The inside differential is dy and the outside differential is dx. Now what this question is asking us to do is to evaluate the following integral by reversing the order of integration. So we want to switch the order of these differentials. Now the first question is why would you want to do that? Well if you look at the double integral here in this example and you try the usual technique of starting with the inside integral first and evaluating that well, we're immediately stuck on this integral because we're trying to integrate this root 1 plus y cubed with respect to y and that's very difficult, if not impossible, in terms of elementary functions. However, if this dx and dy were switched around, it's very easy to integrate root 1 plus y cubed with respect to x. Okay, so one of the motivations in learning this technique today is that it will in many cases reduce very difficult integrals down to very simple ones and you, know, you can use this order reversion when performing calculations involving applications or more involved problems so the question is how do, how do we reverse the, the order of integration well it comes down to analyzing the these upper and lower limits forming the region of integration and then redescribing it suitably. Now firstly notice this lower limit of integration is non-constant. We've got a root x there. If, this, if, we, if we did have a constant here then we could just switch the integral signs, switch the differentials by applying Fubini's uh, simple theorem for rectangles. However, um, we can't do that in this case. So what we're going to do is analyze our region of, of integration. Now I'm going to call the region of integration omega. Now we can form omega from these upper and lower limits of integration in our integral sign and um, acknowledging the order of the differentials. Okay, so the outside differential is dx, so x is between 0 and 1, and y is the, uh, dy is the inside differential, so y is between root x and positive 1. Now, you can see that under this description of omega, x is bounded below and above by constants, and y is not necessarily bounded by constants. Okay, what we are going to try to do is to mathematically redescribe this region omega, and have two constants around or bounding our y, and not necessarily having two constants around our x. So the nature, I guess, of these bounds are being reversed. Now, how, how do we do that? Well, let's firstly draw our omega, because that will give us some insight into the geometry of the problem. So I'm going to draw our two-dimensional region omega in the xy plane. Okay, so firstly, let's draw in the lines x equals 1, x equals 0. Okay, x equals 0 is just, of course, the y-axis. Let's draw in the lines y equals 1, y equals root x. And of course, w uh, sorry, y equals root x will be something like this. Okay, so now we need to determine is it this region or this region that omega represents? Well, x is between 0 and 1, so this represents this 
infinite strip and y, the y points lie below this horizontal line but above th this curve root x so our region of interest omega lies here okay so let's look at that um, picture for, for a little while and note a few things well I said that x was bounded by two constants okay they're just two parallel lines that are parallel to the y-axis. What we're going to do is try to describe omega by not using two parallel lines parallel to the y-axis but using two lines that bound omega that run parallel to the x-axis plus you know some other lines. I mean in our original description these two lines are, or two curves are involved as well so we have to get some some more curves there too. So can we use two parallel lines that are parallel to the x-axis that bound omega and two possible non-parallel lines. So let's try to do that. Now before I, I get there I'm going to Instead of having y as a function of x here, I'm going to write x in terms of y. And that, that would be clear why I've done that in a moment. Alright, so let's re-describe omega in mathematical terms. So instead of having two parallel lines that are parallel to the y-axis, let's use two parallel lines that bound omega above and below that are parallel to the x-axis. Okay, so how can we do that? Well, that's the line y equals 0 and that's the line y equals 1. So, we've now, instead of having two constants bounding the x-points, we've got two constants bounding the y-points. And what about x? Well, all the x points in omega lie to the, uh, the right of the line x equals 0 and lie to the left of the line x equals y squared. So, you can see how this comes into play now. So now I've re-described omega using a different setup, different um, uh, description of lines here. But the big question is, how does that help us? Well, let's rewrite our double integral in terms of this description of omega. Okay. So constants or the constant upper and lower limits go on the outside integral the integrand or the function that we're integrating is still the same and we will have a dx now and a dy on the outside so let's consider what we have we have now, you can see, reversed the order of integration. Our upper and lower limits have changed. So is this easier than this? Well, yes, because it's very easy to integrate this function with respect to x. So let's do that. So I'm going to get something like this. So if I substitute in in normal way, I'll get a single integral now. So now I can evaluate this one of two ways. I can do it by inspection or I can use the substitution, say, u equals 1 plus y cubed. Well, I'm going to do it by inspection. And... I'm 
I get the following. And if I just substitute in in the usual way, I'll come up with the following answer. So I've solved the problem and essentially it involved first of all recognizing our region of integration, sketching the region and mathematically redescribing it by looking for a certain set of two parallel lines that are parallel to a certain axis and two possibly non-parallel lines that bound the region of integration. So let's look at the bigger picture now. And this basically has to do with method. When reversing the order of integration, the region of integration needs to be suitably mathematically redescribed. And appropriate diagrams will help with the understanding of the geometry of the problem, and hence it will assist with the redescription of the region of integration. So in other words, always draw a picture. So here's an example that I'm going to leave you to do. Reverse the order of integration here, and hence evaluate the integral. Now you can see, if I just try to do it straight up, I can't integrate sine of y squared with respect to y in terms of elementary functions.